Again, Andy Campbell with Baker Tilly. Uh, we work with about 400 communities in the state of Michigan, and we've worked on uh, the sewer rates for the city of Saginaw since the SAW grant uh, a few years ago. So I'm going to go through a few things tonight. It's going to be a relatively quick presentation, but I do want to cover a couple different topics. Uh, we're going to talk about the expected sewer rate increase that we're hoping that council will adopt tonight. Um, it is a three-year plan. We're going to talk about the, the actual numbers that everybody uh, will hopefully experience in terms of what, it, what this does to a typical homeowner, try to relate it back to the dollars and cents that a typical homeowner will experience on their bill. Uh, we're going to talk about the capital improvement funding. Capital improvement funding is a significant portion of why we are here tonight to talk about sewer rates. Um, we're also going to talk about the cash flow debt, uh, the current debt that's on the system, and then next steps from here. So hopefully you can see that. Um, it's on, you guys have it on your screen too, right? And on your computers? Oh, you have it on there. Okay, gotcha. So um, I'm going to get right to the meat of it here in terms of talking about the expected sewer rate increase. We've talked about this for um, a year now maybe. Uh, my predecessor and mentor Tom Traciak started with the project. He retired at the end of the year so I took over January 1 and so I get to deliver the presentation here tonight. Uh, one of the major things that we wanted to discuss is that sewer rates have not been increased for over 15 years. Um, this has been, the, the system has been running operationally fine in the, those 15 years and a lot of it has come down to really good management on part of administration and council and staff and uh, making sure that everything is running effectively but with everything coming down the pike with capital improvements uh, it is definitely the time that we is needed to increase sewer rates uh, as a preview the capital improvements and Paul will talk about this in his presentation too and the capital improvement need over the next 10 years is about 40 million dollars that is number one reason why we're talking about this tonight as a preview, I just want to go through uh, where rates are at and how rates are going to be possibly affected, um, obviously with approval tonight. The, everybody in the system pays two different charges. It, there's what's called the ready to serve charge and then there's a commodity charge which is based on the usage. The ready to serve charge is based on the meter size. So in our presentation, I'm going to talk about how does this impact a typical homeowner um, and your base ready to serve charge is $39.65 per month. So with zero use, your, your resident pays $39.65. That part of their bill um, is on the sewer side just for the, the use of the system. Commonly, that's used for a lot of different fixed costs. Water and sewer systems, and Ref Telus will go over the water side here in a little bit too, but there, there is a lot of fixed costs to maintain systems. It is not as simple as if we don't use the system, we don't have to pay for it. There's a lot of pipes, there's a lot of assets that have a lot of costs, no matter if, you, if the system is used or not. Uh, the plant, obviously, as well. So that maintains a lot of the fixed costs on the system, and that, again, is charged di uh, differently depending on what size meter you have. The commodity charge is currently $4.82 per thousand gallons. So for every 1,000 gallons, you pay $4.82. And again, this is just the sewer part of the bill. The typical homeowner pays $58.93 per month. Um, th this is just the sewer part of the bill. We're going to talk about how this will be potentially affected in the future here. But um, you guys have done a very good job of maintaining everything currently with, with that fee. And it's really trying to be proactive and looking towards the future of there's a lot of capital improvements that need to get done and the system has to be self-funded. Um, it is what's called an enterprise fund. We have to make sure that we're bringing in enough money to maintain and fund the system over the, the life cycle. And um, so tonight's uh, kind of presentation is about how we've, we've gone basically as far as we can on the rates that we have now and it's really about making sure that we update and maintain the system so that it is effective for the next 10, 20, 30 years. What we're asking for tonight is an increase to the 23, 24 rates. Uh, the typical homeowner's bill will be increased by $2.70. Uh, we talked about a number of different scenarios over the past year or so, 
and we talked about our first scenario actually um, a couple weeks ago and we have decided to propose just an increase on the commodity charge aspect so as response from council and kind of taking into account feedback from council uh, we did limit the increase to just the variable rate of the bill uh, the ready to serve charge will remain the same at 39.65 and the commodity charge will go to five dollars and 49 cents per thousand gallons and again for your typical homeowner that uses four thousand gallons per month that would result in a bill increase of two dollars and seventy cents when we look at uh, the future here this is a three-year plan that we are proposing for adoption tonight uh, the three-year plan is is about the same each year it's that there's rounding and such obviously but it's around two dollars and 75 cents of an increase every fiscal year start so the first increase will go into effect obviously with approval July 1 of 2023 the following increase would be July 1 2024 the third increase would be July 1 2025 so essentially the the increase would take effect we'd have 12 billing cycles and then another increase in another 12 billing cycles every year with your fiscal year start um, and you can see that the how the typical homeowners bill is affected over the next three years one of the things that we did talk about in kind of a uh, a positive that's that's keeping rates in check is that the sewer fund has debt that's falling off uh, what you can see here is a, a, a compilation of the six debt issues that the sewer fund pays for. Uh, currently, the debt issues are around $923,000 per year. It is going down by approximately $100,000 next fiscal year, and then it will further decrease over time as each bond issue falls off. Um, we do expect that future debt will be layered in to take some of this place. Um, that is one of the aspects that we're looking at in terms of how to best prepare for capital improvements in the next 10 years with and actually i'm going to go right right to that uh, this is the expectation of capital improvement funding for the next 10 years it's about 40 million dollars uh, one of the things that we talked about extensively in the working group is as a rate consultant we do bond advising and rate consultant we do both across the state as a rate consultant, you, we really do try to cash fund as much capital improvements as possible. Um, if you're cash funding capital improvements on the system, you're not paying for interest cost, which is a lost cost. You're not paying fees for bond advisors and attorneys. It really does help you save money overall for the rate payers in the system. And again, this all is money that the rate payers are accumulating, that's staying in the enterprise and paying for the expenses including debt and capital improvements on the system uh, one of the things that we are looking at is the potential to go after state revolving fund money which is hopefully grant um, and, and or loan commonly called a bond in our world uh, especially for you can see that that big number in 24 25 about of about 12 million dollars um, this is Kind of one of the things that we're targeting and on, on what could po possibly change over the next few years is if we get a lot of grant from the state of michigan uh, the state revolving fund is actually coincidentally with what's been talked about tonight a lot of the arpa money that the state has received for their share is being portioned into the revolving fund for water and sewer capital uh, so they are putting a lot of their funds into that and the state uh, the city of saginaw is in the process of applying for some of those funds um, obviously we would hope that some of its grant but their program is generally speaking a mix of grant and loan uh, it depends on a number of different factors um, but there it, i know that the city is currently applying for that and hoping to receive some of the grant as part of this process um, and you have all of the details lined up to receive it it just obviously is not guaranteed I do want to stress that with those decisions that we're making in terms of going after revolving fund monies, trying to fund all these capital improvements, the three-year plan does not change if you receive grant. It is more so after the, the, the next three years what happens in the future with, if you receive grant. The capital funding that you need in the next few years is extensive. 
there's going to be more need if you get grant and we get and we get some of the the funding in terms of uh, we get a 50 percent or 75 percent grant there is a, a lot of other capital improvement needs that need to get done and that can be moved up or uh, it, a lot of it can be changed around depending on what the grant potential is um, our recommendation for that three-year plan is to keep everything the same and then the hope is that with grant funding we can kind of limit the increases in years four five six and on down the line so again like we are proposing the 20 fiscal year 24 25 26 increases tonight and that the hope is that with extensive grants received from the state maybe we can in fiscal years 27 on limit that impact to residents with grants received uh, this is going to be really small, but I do want to, a lot of this, we are going to submit our fancy final pretty report with all the graphs and everything here um, after the decision is made. Uh, one of the things that I do want to talk about in this that I have not covered is the use of cash reserves. So one of the things that we talked about is that the sewer fund has a, um, a, a very good cash reserve balance right now and is going to be useful in the next 10 years, especially with the $40 million of capital improvements that's targeted. Uh, just as in terms of rough numbers, you can see the exact numbers up there. Uh, the cash balance is approximately $20 million to start this fiscal year. Uh, if we do anticipate a little bit of grant, but uh, a lot of this is to show if we don't receive any grant, it is anticipated, even with the rate increases we're talking about tonight, that the cash reserves could be spent down to $5 million in the next 10 years. That's where I'm talking about extensively that we are hoping that the grants alleviate some of that spend down. We don't really want to go from $20 million to $5 million, but we do take into account the fact that it's, it's melding a lot of different priorities together. If you keep all that money in cash reserves and you don't get grants, then we have to raise rates even higher, which we really don't want to do. So we're trying to balance a lot of different priorities of um, keeping a reasonable amount of cash, going after as many grants as we possibly can get in terms of uh, both, I know uh, Tom's gonna to talk about water and, and obviously sewer here, going after both sides, trying to get as much grant as we can, uh, trying to keep, a, I don't know if I said this, trying to keep the cash balance in a reasonable manner but also the sense that we understand that there are people in different positions for rates. We do have to look at a nominal increase in the next three years, uh, but we don't want to just keep a bunch of cash in our reserves and not limit the impact to rate, rate payers. So we're trying to balance all of those things together in terms of making a solid plan that um, we believe is, is sustainable for everybody. Next steps. Uh, tonight, we're looking for uh, agreement on the adoption of the 20 fiscal year end 24, 25, 26 sewer rates. Uh, again, the typical homeowner's bill average increase is $2.75 per month per fiscal year. Uh, it will affect different rate payers differently depending on meter size and use and such, but that we do take that into account of just trying to relay that into what your typical homeowner would see. And then also, uh, I think that this is already underway, but we are going through, uh, the, the city staff is going through the process to apply for grants, um, hopefully a lot of grants, but uh, grants slash loans with the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, which is the sewer side of the program, to help fund some of these capital improvements.